Hello, everyone, and thanks for waiting, and thank you for joining us on another awesome Wednesday night. Katie and I are excited to be back. We weren't with you last Wednesday. Uh, Katie, you want to tell them what we're doing? We were moving them, our oldest, to their new dorm. It's college. So we were colleging it up, but um, we're back tonight, <clears throat> and we're going to tie some really small flies. Good evening, Ed and Bill. What's going on? Good day, Ken. Um, we're going to be tying a CDC fed tail, which is uh, we've actually planned to do this about three weeks ago, and and maybe it's just because I've been looking for them now, but I've seen a lot of people tying them. Um, but the biggest uh, um, biggest thing we're going to do different is we're going to tie them in a size 20. Uh, I've got, what's up, Patrick? Hey, Gary. Um, and uh, we're going to start off with an 18. They're going to do two size 20s. And this, I can't remember if it was an 18 or 20, but we had um, John Christopher, our 10-year-old, uh, out in uh, in the Great Smoky Mountains a couple of weeks ago. And this is the fly. This is the exact fly that caught the majority of the fish that, that, that he caught. Um, he used it just as a dropper. He had a, a little dry on there and used his dropper with about a, it was a small stream. So about two to two and a half foot tag. Uh, and, it, and it did great. What's up, Josh? Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining us and everyone on Instagram. If you're watching, we'd love to have you come over and join us on YouTube. You'll be able to see and hear quite a bit better. Um, so we're, we're going to get started. And then Katie, once I finish this first one, Katie is going to go over some of the pictures we, that, that were sent to us from the gasolina from a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And she's excited about that. So what's up, Fisher's Flies? So I had it in my vice. May as well show it. So this is one of the flies here in the vice that uh, that we posted today. Um, because <clears throat> I'll, I'll probably forget. I'll go and zoom in on Instagram. Um, so this is a, the size 20. And this is a really simple fly to tie. Um, the, uh, the biggest thing with this is uh, washing your thread wraps. Um, the, the wire is counter wrapped or actually... Technically, the um, the pheasant tails counter wrapped. So um, we'll go over the materials and we'll get this one knocked out. So let's switch this out and put the hook and bead in the vise here. And uh, Katie can get this getting focused. I think that looks pretty good. Um, so the hook we're going to be using is this one. Uh, what's up, Jeff? Is this one here? Uh, the Unqua X series. The Purdy Jig, it's the XC210. Uh, and actually, I've got the size 18 in the vise right now. So this one right here is the one we're going to use. Um, when you're going really small, this is a, a good uh, a good hook to go with. On the, um, the size 18s, we're going to use these uh, <clears throat> Silverfly 2.3 millimeter slotted tungsten beads in gold. And in the on the 20s, we're going to use two millimeter slotted tungsten beads. So nothing too nothing too fancy yet, and there's really nothing fancy at all about the uh, thing. Was that? Oh, thank you, ma'am. Um, so <clears throat> we'll go ahead and go ahead and get going on it. The um, and Katie, I think just realized I can't see the the comments. So hopefully, um. Hopefully we'll be able to see it. So uh, the thread I'm going to be using is this 18 knot uh, Silverfly Classic Wax Thread in black. And uh, then the hot spot will be that same 18 knot Classic Wax Thread, Classic Wax Thread in fluorescent red. Now, the reason this is such a cool thread is this is, you see right there, which is 30D. This is 30 denier thread. So normally when we're tying, we're using 12 knot thread that's 70 denier. Um, hey, Troy. If you've been commenting before, Troy just said good evening, everyone. I apologize. I did not see your uh, um, your comment. Jim, it is once in a blue moon. It's awesome to see you on. So as I was saying, this 18-knot uh, thread is 30 denier. You'll see it's plenty strong for this fly. Um, keeping this fly thin and um, smooth is going to be one of the keys to it. So I take my 
my thread, go ahead and prop up my bead where it needs to go. And uh, then we'll work it back. Now, because the thread is so thin, I want to make sure that I put some extra thread wraps in before I um, <clears throat> before I break it off. Uh, the only reason I'm not using nano silk is because the classic wax is going to have a little bit more grip to it. It's going to hold the, the materials better where it's not as slick. Um, you could absolutely use nano silk for sure. No, no issue, nothing against nano silk. Um, but uh, the nano silk is going, going to lay probably a little bit flatter than this will. Um, but the um, yeah, the biggest thing is the uh, is the slickness of it. This is going to be a lot grippier. Um, so another material that didn't show. Do you want to show over here over here on the side? Uh, so for the tail, and we use is this uh, got this this cocktail on hen cape. Um, you can use CDL rooster like we normally use on Perdigons and stuff. So this here's the the rooster. The rooster is going to have stiffer fibers. The hen is going to have um, a lot webbier, a lot softer fibers. Uh, if you don't have either one, you can grab a, a feather off of your uh, your rooster cape or your hen cape and and go for it. Um, it's so small. The um, as you can see right here. This just has really nice speckling, really nice coloring. I like it, but there's not much of the tail that's going to be uh, going to be showing anyway. One of the uh, disadvantages using the hen, I feel like it's not quite as durable, but I just think it's prettier and it moves better. So on this size 18, I'm going to use four four fibers. So you see there, I've got it should be two and maybe two and three. I'm going to use four fibers. So yep, try to separate it out. So I've got four. So see there, there's four. Grab the little clump, pull it off. You can see now my butts are lined up straight. That's exactly what we want. And now I've got my, my tips going just the way we want them. Don't worry too much about the length. And remember, all we've got is one layer of thread down, not even a, a full compact layer. Grab my, um, the, I'm grabbing the hook shank with the, the with my fingers are holding the, the fibers. Come up, work my thread in between my, my fingers. It's loose and pull it straight down. And now you can see that that's right on top of the hook shank. Should be anyway. And now I'm going to grab my um, butts and just pull it to length. Now, right now I kind of tied on top of where, um, <clears throat> where my thread was. So I can just pull my thread back. That uh, makes it where it's flat. I want to really shorten those guys up so they're the right length to where they're roughly the exposed hook shank just like that now with wraps keeping that material on the very top and the reason i do four and i think i actually broke one of them off is so in case i do break one off there's one more it'll fish with three it'll fish with two it'll fish with one heck it'll fish with none probably just fine um, so now we're going to go to our wire. <clears throat> so on this one, we use the 0.2 millimeter, all right, the 0.2 millimeter uh, bright gold tying wire. So we'll pull this off, bring it around, pop it off. And I'm going to tie this on your side of the hook shank. So just grab it, kind of catch it right there, bring it down. So we've got one layer of thread down, one layer of thread up, and then we've got one layer of thread back down. So here's where we're going to tie our, our pheasant tail <clears throat> because it is a pheasant tail fly. Um, and we get three fibers off of here, and we do the same thing. Grab the, the fibers, pull the stem away from the fibers. And um, now we've got a little group of three. just want to cut this the, the very, very tips of them off, right? Like, that and we'll tie this on my side of the hook shank so just like that now this is a giant size 18 if you want to put a little bit of a um, taper in I guess you could but I wouldn't really suggest it on these these small flies there's no no real need to put a taper in 
So when we do that, when we wrap this, we want to, um, well, I'm going to use my rotary feature, but you can use your, your hands if you'd like. But we get that first one, first wrap down. Make sure those fibers are nice and lined up. Now we're going to bring it right back up. This one kind of split on me a little bit, so I'm going to let it overlap just a bit. And there we go. There's our, our quick little down and dirty body. So I did wrap that in the opposite direction of my thread. So I'm going to take my thread now. I'm going to cross over. One behind it, one in front. One behind it, one in front. And that's good for now. Thank you, Katie. Am I missing anyone, Katie? Uh, we've got why not use nano silk and okay, cool. Then you explain. So nothing new since then. Awesome. <clears throat> so now we're going to take the uh, the wire and wrap this the same way we're going to wrap the um, um, we're going to wrap our thread. And if you'll notice what I what I did, and Katie, we go to the side view, please, ma'am. Um, with my um, with my vice right here, or with my bobbin cradle, I just bring it over. I'm not putting a half hitch. I'm not doing anything because the um, my hook, the hook eyes, gonna keep it from unra unraveling. I take my my wire up, or this is how I wrap the um, the pheasant tail, and I can just. Bring it up like this. Now I bring this down, bring it all the way around. Two, three. So now we've got our um, <clears throat> our body made. So you want to switch back over to the um, to the fly itself. I know you're messing with. You're trying to get the comments to show. You're doing great. Perfect. So that's that's what we just did by by rotating that around, and um, like I said, you can do that by hand. But this is one of the things I really like about having a true rotary vice. Rotary vice is I can turn it around just like this. I can wrap materials. I don't have to worry about that hook shank moving at all. It just kind of works. Um, so as far as dubbing, you just need a teeny, teeny, teeny pinch. But before we do that, we're going to switch our thread. Gary, you're supposed to tell me to not forget something. He said, good, nice hoodie. Oh, thank you, Gary. He was with us when I bought this. He was not with us when we bought yours, though, unfortunately. No. Um, <clears throat> but he's seen it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so to, to switch the thread, I'm just going to do a couple, two or three wraps here with my, my fluorescent red. Then I'm going to take both a tag end here and my my black thread that was using I'm gonna wrap it all around one two three four bring it and do another wrap so we, we essentially just tied our uh the black thread onto our um onto our new thread and uh and now we switched over um i don't want to say tie but we we wrapped them together. So um, just an easy way to, to switch colors. So now we're ready for our dubbing. And as far as dubbing, you can use whatever kind of dubbing you want, like more of a natural color. This is, the reason I'm going to tell you, this is a, a special blend from Smoky Mountain Angler that uh, an employee that works there as a guide uh, made for me. And if you want some, call Smoky Mountain Angler, and they, they'll probably get you hooked up. But uh, Did Jesse make that? No, Jesse. I got it from Jesse, but Chris made it. Um, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of dubbing on, but you can use ice dub, you can use whatever you want, but just you know, more of a we're our hot spots are thread, so we don't need to worry too much about adding a whole bunch of um uh colors here. And if you want to, that's that's totally fine. But um keep a nice thin dubbing noodle so we can really control. Let's switch back over to the the fly itself. Um, so we can really control. You see how it's got like a lot of different colors in it. Um, don't need much. We'll get by with just that. Now pull this back. Now here's kind of the, the magic. So 
we're going to cut this one longer fiber off. And I'm going to get my CDC feather out. So I've got one that I've probably tied, oh, two or three flies. There's one gap, two gaps. So probably three flies on already. Um, and I like using the, the Swiss CDC clamp. And this is kind of a, a ridiculous weight, not waste, but definitely not something that um, you have to have to tie this fly at all. Uh, I like being able to measure the um, how much CDC I'm using. You see the little ticks there? That'll tell me how much I can need to use so I'm consistent with each one. You know, the, the uh, Mark Pettigene clip, I could just put little tick marks on it and be fine. Not a big deal there. Uh, if I use if I had a chip clip, I could do the exact same thing. So not a big deal. Let's switch over to the side and angles you can see. So I'm gonna take my CDC feather and stick it in the clip to about oh gosh, what is that? In between the quarter and half mark. I don't know. But the in between the quarter and half mark is what I'm shooting for. And I've got my <clears throat> my fibers in my clip. And so the, the 18 knot classic wax thread is un unlike the, the regular classic wax wax three eighths. Thank you, Gary. I know you'd be able to tell me just right. So unlike the, um, the regular classic wax thread and most threads, uh, as I said, it's not super flat. It's basically two cores. So when I get them all out, You'll see in just a second. Oh, going the wrong way. It would have helped if I didn't just twist it up just now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my, my bodkin to figure out which way I need to spin it. And once it gets flat, then the, the two cords will just open up. What's up, on-stream assassins? Long time. No C. So you can see I've got two, so now there's two 14, 15 knot pieces of thread here. They're still pretty strong. So you don't have to do the whole like getting it super flat, then poking it to get the middle of it. You just find it where it, um, when it uncords, stick your, uh, your CDC in. Now we'll back it off. And we're looking good. Now, if you want to go ahead, <clears throat> if you want to do some pre-trimming now to get, get rid of some of that long stuff, you can. Like this, or you can do it before you put in the chip clip, or you can do it afterwards. But just or you can never do it. Or you can never do it. That's right. So I'm going to spin it back up. So we're just cording it back up. Take my fingernail, slide it forward. Make sure we're all tied in there nice and tight just cramming this right behind that bead and this is why i really like this thread so i just put three four wraps on there this is a size 18 so we're getting ready to really micro size it but with the 20. but you see i don't have a huge huge collar right now with that fluorescent red thread so I, <clears throat> gary as you know i like using the double davy katie likes using double davy I like the double day. Um, and we use that on most of our flies um, that don't require a loop knot because the diameter, the size of the knot is extremely small. And that's the, uh, that's kind of the important thing is it's a, the, it's a small size. So sink rate's always an issue. And the CDC is going to make this, they're going to slow this thing down. Um, the, that little bit of um, compared to a Pertagon that's covered with resin and everything. You know, all this stuff that, that is adding um, resistance in the water columns will slow it down. But our knot is going to be really small, and that's going to help uh, keep it from being slowed down. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, Double Davy is our favorite. Katie could show you how to tie one if you all need to get learnt. If you guys need me to learn you how to do it, I can school you up. All right, so let's put a little bit of resin on here. It's a double davy. Thank you, Nan, for asking, and it's good to see you on here. 
I don't know if I spelled Davy right, but D A V Y. Compile it to spell it. And you can just do a Davy too if you want. Yep, you can do a single Davy. We've been using it for a while. And uh, so <laughs> I'll learn you, Nan. I'll learn you. Learn me soon. Um, so the the nice thing about this collar, so that's that was a four or five turn whip finish. I can't remember. And you see how the the size that size of the collar. If that thread was twice as thick, so like I said, the twelve aught classic wax thread is seventy denier. Um, so that that collar would be a lot bigger for me. That's perfect because I can get my. I'll just have Sally Hansen's on it, but we can throw the light on there, and that thing is going to absolutely explode in the water with that UV. That that's the only that's what we want for a uh, for a hot spot. Um, when you're tying this small, you know, if I was tying size 14, I might put a little dubbing or something in there. Um, but, um, well, Katie, you can find some, find some string and show it real quick. Um, but speaking of Katie showing you some stuff, would you like to, we got the one done. Would you like to, uh, to show the pictures and then we'll move on to size 18s? I would love to. She's looking up the, looking up some Davy stuff. You're going to do my FEMA inspection right first course if my head hurts. Oh, Katie, Katie just cheated big time. How? Because you put up the animated knots. Oh, well, I like the animated knots. Whoever invented <laughs> that website did a great job. All right. So I'm absolutely good with, um, and now that I'm watching it, I'm like, wait, is that what I do? Here's why, okay. Here's why I, want to do the double davy all the time it's because it's the only knot that i can tie a line on on the hook like fishing line or anything without my glasses on just because you've done it so many times yeah. and have you have you had one that has failed other than like it breaking never have you had one in a long time never I, I, like like one that, have, one that's come untied the last time i, I can't remember one ever coming Ever. Ever, never. Ever, never? Never, ever. So let's look at some pictures. Some okay. Gasolina. Some gasoline. That sounds great. We have a couple from Surfer Dad slash Grey Ghost. With the beautiful iridescent body. Old Ed. There's another one from Ed. With his little, like, Jenga tower of... Flies and Patrick W. Smith shared a few gasolinas. That's a good Our one. friend from down under, Ken B., tied up a good mess of them. I really like the, the color of that bead. I can't tell exactly what color it is, but it looks cool in the picture. And we also had uh, a picture from Jay Wilson with some purdy gasolinas. So thanks, guys, for sharing your gasolinas with us this week. I sure did enjoy looking at them a whole bunch. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. you you. Katie lost, or Katie, Nan lost a brassy a double cinch knot last weekend. That's crazy. That you doubled it up and lost it. So if I can get a hook out, let's go to the side view, see if this, see if this will be seeable. Here's a bigger hook. And we'll get some something you'll be able to see if I can get it open. Yeah, you can kind of see that. So here's a double Davy. E. Richard uses the Davy. That's Ed. And like I said, you can just do a Davy too if you want. Well, I'll show, I, I I'll show know, the like difference. I said, the now, only reason why I do the double Davy is because I can do it like with my eyes closed. It's the only thing I can do with my eyes closed with no glasses and barely any light. Well, I still need my glasses, especially on, on uh, the 18s and 20s. Just getting the tippet through the, the hook eye is important. So um, put your, your tippet through the hook eye, okay? And then you take your, uh, your tag in here. So we got our standing line, our tag in. And we're going to just pass it through and do an overhand knot. Okay. So we just cross it over to an overhand knot. So we take that line that's sticking up, put our fingers through, and, and pull it back through the, the loop. Take that line, bring it around, and back through. Shoot. Don't drop it. 
So totally not planning this. So we'll do our overhand knot up in there, go around the, the near side, up in there, go around the far side, up in there. And now we'll wet it, pull it tight. And I usually try to hold my tag down low so my tag's really short. And that's it. So when you're done, the, the tag end should stick out at a 90 degree angle, which that one is not really because it went through the hook eye. So let's get, let's look at the, uh, I can be see Ken. Thanks for hopping on. Yeah. I can't see the comments again, but, um, can you switch it to the device? There we go. So the, the, <clears throat> not is really small. So this is, this is eight pound test line on a big, big, big hook. And you see how small the knot is comparatively. So we'll do that one more time. I'll try to do a little bit closer so you can see it. If I can get it off, there we go. So take your, your line, stick it in the hook eye, Hold it here. We're going to make an overhead knot, however you want to do it. So all we did is made an overhead knot. So the, the, the tag ends coming up through the loop, bring it around, back through the loop on the near side, round back through the loop on the small side. I'll just pull out just enough. You can hold on to it in the hook. You wet it. Pull it tight. that's it so it's a super small knot i mean imagine if that was um <clears throat> switch back over imagine if that was um teeny tiny uh tippet compared to that that big old hook eye this thing the knot holds really well so for a uh once you put an apple air tag on fish and desk i'm not convinced it'll work <laughs> no i don't think it will if you don't have service but a regular Navy knot, you just don't do that last um, turn through the loop. So pretty simple. I would do it with something smaller, but I don't have anything small that I can get within quick. So let's, speaking of small, let's do a size 18. So I've that got... That sounds good. I've got a... Uh, sorry, let's do a size 20. And if you're watching on... Well, there's never mind. Getting these little hooks straight in the vise can be fun, especially get them straight so you can see them straight. There we go. So we got our size eight, size twenty. This is the Umqua Perta Jig XC two ten in size twenty. And I don't really know how air tags work. Like so I make all the kids have Life three sixty. On their yeah. mouse. But they, if they don't have service, they don't work. No, they don't. But if they don't have service, then I'm coming to find them. <laughs> Send them a text. Say, turn your thing back on. Howdy, Truman. What's up, Truman? All right. So our 20 is in here with our two millimeter bead, taking the same um, 18 knot classic wax thread. Wrap it back. And remember, put a few extra turns in your your jam knot because that's so so thin, both the, the hook and the the uh, thread that, you, that it'll it'll lose grip. So bring it back. Don't bring it all the way back to the edge because we want to leave a little bit of room to to put our our tail. We're gonna grab our CDL hen, whatever kind you want to use is fine. Grab four fibers. Of course, that time I grabbed three. So we'll make it four. So I've got our four fibers pulled away. See our butt ends are lined up. Do our pinch wrap. Bring it back. Now we're going to pull the pull the butt ends to length. Make sure you grab all the butt ends because if you don't grab all of them, 
the length won't be correct. A little bit shorter. There we go. Now, you can use open wraps for this if you want. But get all the way up. <clears throat> we'll cut this off. Now we're going to find the wire that I just pulled off. That can always be fun, especially when we've been playing with tippet, playing with a lot of other stuff. Hmm, where'd it go? I hate to break off another piece. Because I, there, that, there it is. Okay. So this is still the 0.2 millimeter. If you want to go to the 0.1 at this point, you can. It's almost nothing but, yeah. I don't think that's silver. We'll see. Pull it to length. Put it on, but we want it to be on the far side of the hook shank. That way it doesn't disturb the tail when I when I go to wrap it. And we're gonna take our pheasant tail and do kind of same thing. Just cut just the tip of it off. I'll twist my thread to make sure it goes the right way. Try to keep our material from wrapping all around and get kind of messy. There we go. Got the wire on one side, got our pheasant tail on the other side. Now remember, <clears throat> I showed you how we wrapped this before. Scared to the side, so I'm, I just brought my uh, Katie. We go to the side uh, camera. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was reading Nan. I missed Nan's comment about having to do a FEMA inspection refresher course. Nan, oh. that sounds fascinating. Well, gosh, will you go over the side, please? Yes, thank you, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so taking my thread, moving my bottom cradle over, and just hanging it. Remember, no. <clears throat> Um, no knot, no wet finish, no half hitch or anything's needed because it's it's kind of holding around that um, uh, the hook eye. So now, if you want to switch over to the hook, so now I'm just going to do touching wraps with the pheasant tail. And you don't want to do that first one. My my wraps were overlapping because my pheasant tail was. Um, spreading out so it's like well i'll just overlap it a little bit but see how that, that right there just side by side no overlapping no gaps no anything just side by side touching wraps that's exactly what you want. <clears throat> exactly what you want so we'll take our thread bring it up we want to cross it over so i'm not bringing it straight up and, and around i'm bringing it up cross do a tight wrap in front cross tight wrap front now, if I was going to whip finish or if I was going to be kind of done, I'd probably do that one more time. But because I'm getting ready to um, wrap wire that's going to reinforce everything, I'm not worried about it. So I'm going to do the same thing with the bobbin cradle. Get this lined up so it goes up just right. Here we go. That was a good wrap. Oh, honey, I'm... I'm a wrapper of sorts i'm impressed with that one so there's three wraps there and remember the the pheasant tail goes the opposite direction you should try micro glint or brown and brown oh, or rust for the yes. body well, yes you should let me pull that out then it wouldn't be a cbc pheasant tail but it's still I'll, I'll pull some out next look katie can look up hold on let me find might we have micro metal? I think it's in that one. I'm trying to figure out where it is. Finding it's gonna be the, the fun part. Here you go, honey. Top row. Okie dokie. That can uh, be for the yeah, next one. Remember when I lost my cell phone because I dropped it in the river when I was fishing? I used Google to find it. Yep. 
It was sitting right there. It was and then we right saw it, there we in saw the middle it turn of the river. Off. Like it couldn't have been more accurate. Well, except for I couldn't get it. It could have been more accurate. Like it could tell us where the river was. Yeah, but... I mean, it could have given me like specific like coordinates. But like, I mean, I, I, I knew that like, I wasn't sure if it was on the bank or on the land. It was in the river. Yeah. It, it was in the middle that. of the whole, of the of South Holston, in the middle of the Otago River. Yeah. And when, but when the river's 200 yards wide or so. Good evening, it's kind Mike of... Nay. Hello, Mike. Okay, so he said the micro blends. Top row, pick a color. And that's what we the actual do. Okay, so we've got our little but, teeny tiny. He oh. said in. He said rust or brown. So we've got like 10 colors. And but no our luck, we will not have the right color. <laughs> Gary, I'm really going to be disappointed with you. Have right now. While she's looking, all I did is, it. is I. I... Well, thank you, ma'am. Hot dog. Can we actually found rust? I like how I just took credit, but can you believe I actually found anything? Um, all right, so we got a little dubbing here. Bring it around. Remember, this is a teeny fly. We don't need much. Maybe one more. That'll be it. Pull that off. And I'm totally good with it. Um, with this pickiness, all that little stuff. You can see, see all that stuff right there. Might pull a little bit of it off, but I'm not worried about trying to get that to uh, uh, come off. Now, I should have changed my thread out just a second ago. So instead, I'll change it out now. But one, two, three. Do the same thing. Wrap it all around. Old, and there's micro glint and old gold. Never heard of that before, have you? I think we've got old gold, actually. Okay. So now we've got our got that changed over. We're going to do the exact same thing with our other CDC feather. See if I've got enough on this one to make us last. Let's see. Looking for a tool. So I'm just striking this down. There we go. So we're going for our three eighths, right, Gary? That's what he said. I didn't leave much. Actually, I did a little under three eighths because it's a bit smaller. Let Michael in old gold. Great, y'all fancy. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing. We'll just use my bobbin. Sorry, my bod can start spinning this around, give it a twist. As you can see the, the twist in there, once it kind of starts going away, then you can kind of let go of it and you'll see little little gaps that form where it's untwisting and, and you've got it kind of untwisted. So real easy. There we go. Now we twist it up again. Let's see. I don't know if I, did you see old gold in there? I don't remember seeing old gold. Let's see. I can do two things at once. Mm, olive, golden olive. That's all. That's our range. Yeller. No, I don't think we've got old gold. You don't want to twist this thing too much, or it will. Not like me. Okay, so we got that done. Run my fingers up. And now you can zoom back in here on the hook. So we'll bring it around. Stroke the fibers back. And I've got it, that all done. Easy piece. And we'll do our last one with the rust, not old gold. But rust micro gland. Because we like changing stuff up on the fly. Hey, 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 hey. 
get it changing stuff up on the fly. That's okay, oh, Gary. He makes up for it the rest of the 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the thing is, when you're doing that, I, when I'm, let me show you kind of what I'm talking about here. I think I lost my feather. No, I didn't. Um, so if this is the, if this is what I want to use here. Okay. So I want to use, I'll take this out. And I, and I would trim this. Let's go ahead and show that real quick. That's too long. So I'm going to go through and just kind of trim trim the, fa the fibers randomly. There's not like one chop anywhere. And roughly that's what I want. Um, but I've got to, to really pay attention because here's, here's my fiber. And I'll come up and I'll put it, put it right here. So about like that. So when I cut it, and you can see where am I on the, the numbers or the ticks. So there's half, that's closer to, to half an inch versus three eighths. Um, so you can see when I come up here and I cut it. So I cut, we'll straighten this up just so it's even. So that's about 1.5 millimeters is I'm just kind of comparing it to a bead. It's about 1.5 millimeters. So a lot of people leave a lot more here hanging out of the butt ends. So they've got more leeway. I don't like there to be a big chunk of butt ends hanging out. I just need a little bit. So I kind of have to really pay attention here. Um, uh, when I'm, when I go to get that loop seated. So, and, and also I'm quiet when I'm whip finished because I can't count to four or five while I'm talking. So who knows? All right, Gary. And who was talking about the, who else was talking about the old gold is a must have. No, Patrick. Patrick was. Well, Patrick, you want me to put a uh, wire rib on here as well? Okay. Bring this back. Get our tail. And this is the last one we're going to do. So if anyone has any questions or just wants to make fun of me, this is your time. You might not be able to do it for another week. Katie, our excited about hanging out with jeff and gary here in less than a month is it's it going... already almost time yes we'll be down there we leave the 24th that's when we fly out oh my goodness and what is today Today's, yeah totes less than a month all right so let's we'll switch back over to the hook so they can say Okay, so we got our, our tail in there. You see the, the modeling there pretty well. So you can see it really well. Mm -hmm. Pull it length. That's about right. Maybe a touch too long. There we go. Now the modeling is all on this side. <laughs> all the purdiness of it. That's what I'm saying. When you're doing these really small ones, if you don't have the perfect color, don't have the, the perfect material, just you probably have something that'll work just fine. The hard part when you're tying these is, is having the right hook, having the right size bead and, and possibly the right thread thread. The rest of it, you can kind of, you can make do. So let's uh, just for the fun of it, since we're doing this, it's probably gonna be a little bit thicker body. We're going to switch to the 0.1 millimeter bright gold tying wire. I'm going to tie it in the same way. Missed it. There we go. Pull it length. Don't do that. That's what I get for like watching the TV and pulling at the same time. There we go. Okay. Now here's our rust micro glint. I should probably use this as a ribbing as well but um 
to work yes, fine. Yes, I'm using four cameras. See you, Truman. Thanks for hanging out. And I think I need to have my camera lenses cleaned for the Canon lenses for sure. I need. I probably need to send them off somewhere. They're getting a little something, but I've got four. You're gonna miss next week, Bill. Oh, well, he's gonna be in Montana. Hopefully, that's right. He, he was asking if we we're gonna be that's up there at the same time as him. Um, well, sorry, Bill. We're gonna we'll, we'll definitely miss you. But they've got the internet in in Montana too. However, if you're anything like us when we were there, we didn't really have. They don't have a regular drugstore in West Yellowstone. I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you that right that now. It's true. So if um, you have prescriptions to fill. Get them done <laughs> ahead of time. Like, be prepared. <clears throat> All right. So, Kay's got that sitting right there. So, we'll wrap this up. Ooh, that looks super cool. Bye, Truman. Is that looking? See, Truman. All right. So, now you got a nice little purdy. Purdy. This is, this is a lot like a. I can't remember what Pertagon we did. We did a, a sulfur type Pertagon with this material a while back. It's a little bit. Quite a bit bigger though. Because remember, this is that 20. 0.1 millimeter wire. Let's wrap it the same way. There we go. Now you can kind of decide whether it's kind of hard to see in the light because it is rust and that gold, which you should be able to tell, see it pretty well. But um, <clears throat> whether you like the 0.1 millimeter better or the the um, 0.2 millimeter, they're both pretty good. Track me in Alaska. Well, that's pretty cool. Good thing my wife will not be tracking me while I'm in Alaska. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Should we track me with a, hey, what you doing? Tracker. All right. So that already, that fits just great, just like that. But. But wait, there's but more. Wait, there's, thank you, honey. So just a teeny little bit. And like I said, the. the I was going to use the the new scud dubbing, um, <clears throat> but this is just the, the perfect color. And I was going to trim the scud dubbing down to make it absolutely perfect. But man, where are you? Where it's so remote? Isn't there like Northwest Law or something up there, or Northeast Law? Northwoods Law. Northwoods Law. Northwoods Law. There we go. Just a teeny bit. See, I had twice too much on there. All right, so we've got our, our piece of CDC we cut off just a second ago. Let's pull it, pull our thread down. You can really see right there. See, I can see that twist in our thread. It's quite a bit of twist. <clears throat> I'm going to start untwisting, and I'm just watching this twist, I'm watching it go away. And once it starts, Disappearing. That's when it will just the thread will just open right up for you. Let's see. So see how see how see how it opens right there. See a little gap. That's what we're looking for. It's just for those two cords to to unspiral, just enough so I can get a bodkin in there, just like that. And here's where I'm going to be really quiet. Oh, shoot. And I wasn't even quiet. I was talking about being quiet and I did it. You just can't help yourself. <laughs> so we've got the, the CDC. Thank you, Michael Straley. Michael L. Straley. I don't know which one you, which part you liked. But uh, if there's something that you like, tell us so we can make sure we keep on doing it. Twisted it up. Take your finger. Slide it up. 
I'm holding those twists that we just put in there until we get to here. Pull that fiber back. I did not cut this any shorter. I probably should have. That's in there. Nice. Let's go ahead and cut it off because that drive me bananas. He said he liked the untwisting in the straight on. Oh, cool. Yeah, I was I was looking up to see if you could even see that part, but I'm glad you could. <clears throat> All right, so we've got that pretty good, maybe a little bit long, but I can go through and fix it in a minute. So you can see how that uh, hot spot, our bright thread is not showing through too much. Once I put a four or five turn whip finish on there, it'll be plenty big, and that's it. The key to this, in my mind, is a diameter of thread. Um, having this the 18 knot classic wax thread, if you don't have at least a couple colors of this, check it out. Um, because it really makes this fly so much easier to tie. Because uh, you can see how I'm not wasting thread wraps. Um, I think it was four. I'm not wasting thread wraps. I, I pretty much did as few thread wraps as I could, and that's that's how I want it. <coughs> like so I've, got, I've got a little CDC sticking out the wrong way, but that's okay. It's um, a little bit like a Christmas ornament in a way. Oh, honey. Maybe if we use the old gold or the whatever, it'll really be like Christmas ornament. It will, yeah. But I like that one. That one did turn out turn out pretty cool. Um, so let's switch it back to one of the other cameras. Let's see who's got a question. Um, so guys, hopefully you saw something you either agreed with or maybe you learned or um, had fun. One of the three. Uh, we'd love to see your. Um, your teeny tiny, grab the smallest hook that you can find. It's a jig hook or, or not, but um, use the tie your CDC uh, pheasant tail, preferably CDC pheasant tail jig. Grab an 18, grab a 20, go smaller if you can find something. Um, tag us in the photograph uh, at Demuth Fly Fishing, or you can email them to us, demuthflyfishing at gmail.com, just all one word. And um, we will. Uh, uh, Katie will share it next week. Uh, if there's something you'd like to see, like the, um, like showing you how to, we kind of impromptu did the, um, did the old uh, double Davy, let us know and we will, um, we'll show you if there's something that's not fly tying you'd like to see. And also, if you've been watching this long and you have liked what you've seen, we'd love it if you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And uh, after we post it, leave a comment, give us a thumbs up, like the, you know, all the stuff I'm supposed to say. Um, but we really appreciate everyone that logging in live with us. It's so much fun seeing you guys uh, interacting with you all and uh, answer your questions and quite frankly, learning from you all. So um, with all the thanks out of the way, I'm going to turn it over to Katie, let her say goodbye, and we will see you next Wednesday night live. See you guys. Bye. Have a great weekend. I hope you get to fish this weekend or time fly. See you later.